Good morning. This is the second Sunday of the season of Pentecost and a warm welcome to all of you joining us for Sunday worship. Just a reminder that Vicar Scott Harvey will have the message today and just also a reminder as usual uh, to click the link above me for online giving. Your offerings are deeply appreciated and much needed. Thank you and have a blessed day. Hi everyone, Andrew Wise here from the Joint Council. Just want to let you all know that we've been working hard during this time, plenty of Zoom meetings. Um, we are at the final stages here. We've been talking to Synod, putting the final wording on our paperwork to send in. There's some couple glitches with it because we're two churches instead of one, but we're at the end point here and soon we'll be able to start interviewing pastors. So good job guys, talk to you later. to Moses from the mountain, saying, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be, for me, a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Serve the 
Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful song. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that the Lord is God, he made us his we are. His people, the flock he tends. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord is good, his kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The mission of Jesus' followers is to continue the mission of Jesus himself. Here, he instructs his first disciples as to how they might proclaim the gospel through their words and deeds. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. As you go, proclaim the good news the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father, and through his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. This is the time of Pentecost, or some would say the green season, since with just a couple of exceptions, the color of the church will be green from now until Advent, late November. Like in nature, green represents for the church growth and a time of doing. The scripture readings during Pentecost primarily focus on the life of Christ in church, along with Jesus' teaching of his disciples and healing of the faithful. In today's gospel story, it gives us some ways of how leaders are formed. I will highlight how it talks about modeling leadership from verse 35, along with viewing the world compassionately from verse 36. A part of growing is a time of learning. As you know, I am in my halfway part of learning to be a pastor since I am a third year seminary student. The first two years were primarily academic, where I learn how different theologies, I learned how to preach, and I learned or studied biblical classes. During that time, I also took some practical knowledge of how those textbook books, knowledge, might be applied in real-life situations. While on internship, 
I am to practice what I was taught in my experience in seminary. One thing that it would stress is ministry is almost completely contextual. That is what I learned or an experience in one context may or may not work here at Redeemer. And what used what worked here in the past or didn't work in the past may be different now. Once I am done with my internship, I will go back to finish my formal education. I will hopefully work on the areas of growth that was identified here. While my last year, if I am approved for ordination, I will then, after I graduate with a Master's of Divinity, work on trying to find my first call. Some, may, some people may think this is the time when my education ends. I would say that as a pastor, this is just the beginning of learning. I may be done with the formal education of writing academic papers and getting grades, but being a pastor is a lifetime of learning. Just imagine the last few years of the pastors and few years, the last few months, it seemed like years, but the last few months of the COVID-19 where people had to learn how to be church during these challenging times. In verse 35, we hear that Jesus went out teaching, proclaiming the good news, and healing the sick. We also know that his disciples were following him and watching what Jesus was doing. To me, this sounds like an apprenticeship method of teaching and learning. It also reminds me of how I am learning as your intern. I would do an activity such as participating in a leader's role in the service or lead an adult Bible class based on my education and my previous experience in different congregations. I would then receive feedback in different ways by my observations and from other peoples such as my supervisor. In verse 36, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion towards them, since they were looking for healing and knowledge not being received from other sources. Jesus was looking out for those, what we would call the voiceless in his society, those widows and children. Remember, during Jesus' time, they were nothing more than cattle or property. Now, who are the voiceless in today's society? Many of you may think about the Black Lives Movement since of all the news about that movement in recent weeks. Other people may think of the homeless with all their issues. And in today's world, not only do they have the normal issues of being homeless, but how hard is it for them to be physically distanced during COVID-19? Or how hard it is for them to wash their hands without wanting water? The church should respond compassionately towards these groups. We should remember that they are our siblings in Christ, that God sent his son to die for them as much for us. We do not need to agree with everything about these groups, but we need to respond lovingly. The church is called to continue God's mission that Jesus started during his earthly ministry. You would find Jesus with what the society today would call the outcasts or the voiceless. The church continues working with those who otherwise do not have voice or are alone in the world, such as hungry, 
the hungry, and the homeless. It is through this work that God shows God's self through us to the world. For this week, the question is, where is Jesus sending you to do ministry? Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for a shared world. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger. Empower all those whose voices go unheard and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks especially today for the milestones that our graduates, Alexandra Barton, R.J. Barton, Hannah Brenner, Zaria Mayo, Sidney Nissen, and Abigail Olensky have attained. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they know your love in all the experiences they have. Bless the parents of these students who have raised their children and nourished them in the Christian faith. Give them strength in your holy presence and give them many joyful reunions with their sons and daughters, those who are leaving home to go far away and those staying close by. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially Joseph Anzalone, Leslie Banks, Virginia Shuffleberger, and Diego Dick Mora. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray also for our members our graduates, those for whom we grieve, our nursing home and assisted living residents, our homebound members, our family and friends, and even our enemies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O Lord, and those too deep for words, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, we pray the prayer our Lord taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And now a final blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter. Bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.